Hey guys, Mo Long with Electro Maker here. Welcome to Me to Maker episode one. I'm here with Gyro, a hobbyist with a keen interest in 3D printing and electronics. Some of his awesome projects include a wireless keyboard for your computer and some really sweet bike wheel lights. So without further ado, Let's get to chatting maker stuff. Um, so okay. you, you mentioned uh, you just got done with work. So first of all, what do you what do you do for like work? Ah, uh, well, actually, work in optimization industry. I basically work we. Uh, the company I work with, they do factory lines. So I usually work with industrial robots and, you know, camera systems for these kind of applications. So that's my job. <laughs> that's super cool. So yeah. did you kind of get into the makerspace because of that? Or did you get into that because you were already in the makerspace? The other way around. So I actually got the job because of because I was a maker. So uh, before I worked in a... Like internet provider, I was on a phone line, kind of, you know, customer service kind of job, and it sucked, you know, quite a bit. But I was making, you know, I was maker, so I was just making things. And then one day, uh, you know, I was just, I was just going for this job interview for this company, and you know, it wasn't going very well. But then I just took out my phone, showed them, you know, everything I made, and you know, they decided to hire me. <laughs> That's neat. So then what was your yeah. introduction to the makerspace originally? Ah, uh, well, that's a good question. I don't know. I think ever since I was a kid, I just, I just kind of liked this kind of, you know, tinkering with electronics and stuff. And I don't know, just on the internet, you know, <laughs> just whatever I saw, I never really had any friends who were interested in this. So it was really just, you know, seeing what other people are doing on the internet. I remember when the Arduino, you know, started and that was, you know, that was kind of cool. So just from the internet, really. Yeah, that's, I think that's how a lot of makers get into it. I know that's what happened yeah. with me. I just was always interested in playing around with things and started messing around yeah. with Linux and got into single board computers. Yeah. So the community, the online community is awesome. So Absolutely. I really appreciate it. So what technologies do you enjoy working with the most and the least? Hmm. Technology. So, uh, I don't know what specifically you mean, but I guess the most, uh, well, definitely electronics like Arduinos and especially when it's something moving like, you know, motors and this kind of stuff. Uh, and least, I don't enjoy anything that's, you know, programming heavy. Uh, so if I am working on a project where I just built something simple and I have to code for two weeks, then <laughs> I'm not really into that. But I don't know, when it comes to technologies, I mean, I'm open to anything. So what about hardware like arduinos with like moving uh motors and things do you enjoy like what elements of those sorts of projects uh draw you in and why do you at least like code heavy things uh yeah well i think it's just making something that nobody else has or can have you know it's just making something only you can have because you build it i, I think that's really cool uh and when it comes to uh, okay, when it comes to moving parts, I just find something satisfying when something moves, even if it doesn't have to, you know. Even when you, when you see like cars with spoilers that just lift up for no reason, <laughs> I think that's super cool. Even though it's it's just going to break and it's just gonna cost more money, but I still think it's really cool. So <laughs> if I can make something move, I always make it move, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, I'm, I'm more of a hardware person. I, I can do code yeah. codey things, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of programming because there's always like one line that you, that's off somehow and you got to go back and troubleshoot. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can see, you know, how much effort you put into programming unlike hardware because 
it's a lot easier to spot, you know, <laughs> how much effort you put into hardware. But into software, you can spend months and nobody will even notice. So Absolutely. it's also sometimes frustrating. I, I really loved your wireless keyboard as well as the bike wheel lights hack. Um, Thanks. Yeah, both of those are awesome. And uh, I'm like, I'm a pretty big like home theater PC guy as well as a big biker. So uh, <laughs> I was digging those. But do you have a project that you are the most proud of? Uh, I think it would probably be the Persistence of Vision wristwatch I've made, if you've seen that. Yeah. It's been a while back, because I still haven't seen anybody else make that, so I'm still kind of like, I'm the first one, and so far the only one, <laughs> so I'm kind of proud of that. And I'm actually working on a second version of it right now, so Ooh, okay. it's probably that one. So let's, <laughs> let's dig into that a little bit. What it kind of inspired that project from the get-go? Oh, what inspired this project? That was a couple of years ago, so <laughs> I don't exactly remember. Um, I don't know. I, I, I remember, I think it was the Ben Heck show. Uh, I don't know if you know about that. But he made it a Persistence of Vision. I don't know, remember what it was. I think it was Top Hat or something. And I just thought it was kind of cool. And then I thought, you know, has anybody made wristwatch? And nobody has. So <laughs> I just kind of got into that. <laughs> And what were some of the challenges that you encountered while you were making that, if you recall? I know you said it was a while ago. And how did you overcome those? Oh, well, one of the biggest problems was I had to calculate the uh, revolutions per second or minute or whatever you would call that, because I needed to refresh the, the screen exactly so it would, you know, always, so it wouldn't ro the screen wouldn't rotate or anything like that. So. That was very difficult. I remember I used uh, infrared sensor, you know, that would just count every revolution. And, and that once I finished that, you know, I was like, this is great, this is working. And I took it outside and I realized that the sun was messing up with the sensor. So I had to go back and actually, you know, kind of build a wall around it and just <laughs> hide sunlight or any ambient light. So I even had to put like, I remember putting electrical tape on top of the PCB because the the sunlight was actually going through the PCB. So this was the kind of problems, you know, you just don't expect happening. <laughs> so what can we expect in the second iteration that you're currently working on? Uh, RGB screen. So that's something I'm definitely working on. Uh, a, lot more pix a lot more pixels. So I think the last one was seven. This one... I still don't know how much, but it's at least going to be twice as much. Uh, and it should be smaller. <laughs> and probably even Bluetooth uh, contact, it should even have Bluetooth. And I'm thinking about doing an app, but I hope somebody else did something already and <laughs> I'll just copy that <laughs> because I don't want to make my own app or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, co coding your own app uh, can be really rewarding, but there's also a lot of time and energy yeah and it can be very frustrating as well <laughs> so you you have a really awesome youtube channel and you have all these really cool side projects so how do you balance your day job as well as the side projects that you have uh well i don't <laughs> no, i mean <laughs> I, don't, I don't upload that frequently if you look at my channel so <laughs> it's simple i mean you know, I don't, I upload like once every couple of months, basically. And so whenever I have time, I'm not very consistent. And I guess that's how usually the projects kind of pile up and I upload three in a month and then I don't do anything for half a year. <laughs> I'm just kind of waiting for components and building. So I usually do multiple projects at once. Just kind of, you know, sometimes at work, I will just design a PCB when I have free time. I shouldn't do that, but probably. <laughs> I don't put that in the it's okay. Just give that. <laughs> I won't rat you out. <laughs> cool. And, you know, every time I came, come back from work, I will just, you know, work on something for half an hour. I think it's very important to just, anytime you have five or ten minutes, just to kind of do something, because you don't really have, because I always tell myself, you know, I will have three or four hours and I will just work on it, but that never happens. So I always try to find like just five, 10 or 15 minutes whenever I have time, you know, before I go to work, after I come back and just, that's how I work on this, you know? 
so it's usually I have everything saved on the cloud somewhere so I can access it anywhere so that helps as well that makes sense and yeah I think that's a I think it's a common problem that um, or, or challenge that a lot of makers have unless they're able to kind of transform that into like a full-time thing of balancing yeah. what they're working on on the side versus versus day job uh, I also this is completely random but I liked the Cliff Martinez music that you used Oh, is that the one? Yeah, I think it's from the movie. What was it? Yeah. Game Night? Yeah, yeah I, I, I saw that a while back and just like loved it. I'm a big like film buff. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I listen, I have that soundtrack like on my phone. So it's like, oh, hey, <laughs> good choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, so aside from the next POV wristwatch, what other projects are you currently working on? Ah, uh, well, right now I'm actually, I think I've already finished with that. I, when I'm working on them, I, I'm not going to be posting it anywhere, I don't think. But just for, like for myself, I'm building uh, like a light that simulates uh, sunrise because right now in the morning, you know, it's really dark and I have trouble waking up. So I just decided, you know, why not make, <laughs> why not make an RGB strip that just simulates sunlight? So that's what I, I have been working on last couple of days. and. It's already working, so that's what I'm working on. But also, uh, I'm kind of just redoing my old projects right now because I have nothing else to do. So I'm also uh, thinking about doing the Kolga, the just like a pistol oh, yeah. <laughs> version of that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just the POV watch and the Kolga, I think so far. That was uh, that was a cool video. I like that. Thanks, man. <laughs> so I'd, I'd yeah. be interested to see that. Um, also the light strip that you were talking about sounds kind of awesome and definitely up my alley so i'd be yeah. i'd be interested to see that documented and maybe try to replicate yeah. that build my own i'm still considering upload it because i actually like data locked the color of the sun during the sunrise and actually you know went through that whole process so i think it might be worth actually uploading that instructable or somewhere i think that would be very much appreciated by a lot of makers yeah <laughs> so we kind of talked a little bit about community what do you enjoy the most about maker communities what are some of your favorite communities that are out there and what are some of the interactions that you've had with other makers hmm. uh, that's a good question uh i think well let's see the communities First of all, my favorite communities, I think Hackaday has one of the, uh, like, just the coolest website because you can just look at cool projects every day. Uh, but also, I think they have one of the worst communities <laughs> because it's just not like worst communities, but every time you look at some project and you go into the comments, it's just, I don't know, I just feel like people are always bashing these projects or not bashing, but they are just like, you know, uh, saying how dumb it is or something i don't know but they showcase cool projects so i like that but some they're not always toxic but i just feel like there is a lot of people you know trying to just help but there is also just people just kind of bashing the projects uh so yeah hecate is cool uh but i also i think the most i spend the most time on, on the arduino forums because i'm not a great programmer so <laughs> I found a huge amount of people there, you know, just willing to help, which I think is cool because they have no reason to help me. And yet I found so many people willing to help. Uh, so that's definitely the community I'm most involved with. Um, but for some cool interactions, uh, I don't know. I don't think I have any cool interactions with the community. Uh, nothing that I can think of on top of my head. You've mentioned Arduino a little bit. Is there any technology, hardware or software that you haven't been able to get hands on with yet, but would like to? Uh, I think, uh, well, apart from the Arduino, there are also the Peak microcontrollers. And I think they are kind of cool. Uh, you know, they are very similar, but a bit different. Nobody really, I mean, people do use them, but the community around them isn't, isn't that big. So sometimes it can be a bit more difficult to just find some resources. So uh, I actually got a couple of those microcontrollers, but I never got into it. So 
that's something I would like to look into because they have so many like sp specific microcontrollers that have just you know you know some of them have uh, capacitive touch capabilities and just very specific things that are really cool but <laughs> just nobody uses them so I think it's kind of a shame so I would like to look into that as well and any other te technologies I don't know I I work with a lot of things at work you know so and that I'm sure provides kind of a different dynamic because from what it seemed like that was a lot of maker and IOT gear on kind of an enterprise level so can you talk a little bit about the tech that you are hands-on with yeah. at work yeah well at work it's it's a lot different because everything is industrial so uh you know everything is a lot more reliable <laughs> which is nice <laughs> But also a lot more expensive. So sometimes, you know, because there are a lot of cool things. We have like completely crazy optical sensors, you know, they are literally just uh, like a fiber optic wire that we are using, which is something you would never use as a maker. And, but, but it's really cool. And, but everything, but also one thing that strikes, strikes me is that you know, in the industry, everything is also very simple. A lot of things are just, you know, driven by simple digital pins so you have this com complicated you know 50,000 robot and you just control it with a simple high and high and low signals from um, another machine so it's it's i don't know it's really weird but you know if it wasn't so expensive <laughs> i think a lot more people would be into that because a lot of those computers are very simple to control a lot of the sensors are, you know, just have a simple potentiometer that you just spin and it works. So they are a lot more user friendly. I would even say that a lot of these uh, makers. And make there's hardware. probably better documentation for a lot of that hardware as well. Uh, yeah, the uh, provided documentation from manufacturers is usually really good. <laughs> but then again, you don't get any community or anything like that. So right. Yeah. So it's a bit of a trade off. Is that? Yeah. And reading 300 pages of data sheet is not fun either, so. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so kind of comparing the hobbyist maker stuff that you get into versus work, which do you find more challenging and which do you find more stimulating? Uh, I think both uh, the makers Maker hardware is definitely a lot more challenging, but also a lot more stimulating because, you know, uh, there's nothing difficult about this industrial stuff. They are, they are all of them are quite simple. So when it comes to the maker stuff, it's it's a bit more complicated. But also, you know, you you get engaged with the community instead of contacting the uh, you know supplier, <laughs> which isn't fun. You get on these forums. You see, you know, when you are looking for a solution. You instead find somebody who's building something completely different and you get to see their projects you get to see their problems you get to see their solutions and that's just a lot more fun absolutely so then outside of work and outside of being a maker what do you enjoy huh well i enjoy video games <laughs> that's something i'm into i also enjoy biking I guess not surprisingly, <laughs> since I have already made two lights for my bike. <laughs> and I don't know. That's about it. I enjoy movies a lot as well. Okay. Uh, so what video games are you currently playing and what are some movies that you've seen recently? Okay. Well, video games, I currently play a lot of PUBG, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Okay. Uh, so I have like 500 hours on that, which I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a bad game, but I just can't, can't stop playing. And I was also playing League of Legends before that a lot. I can't even, I don't even know how much. Fortunately, that doesn't, you know, doesn't tell you how much you play because I would be embarrassed to <laughs> admit that. <laughs> it's okay, I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And for the movies, uh, recently, uh, well, let's see. I'll just check, actually. I don't remember what I watched. Uh, I have seen the 8th grade, 
which was the Bob Burnham movie. And I thought that was really cool, actually. <laughs> I know that I don't I don't think the movie is actually for me, but you know, sometimes I watch these teenage comedies and I wonder why. <laughs> 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 but that's just me. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I don't remember any recent movie that I've enjoyed. Apart, from, I think the last movie I enjoyed was Bla the Blade Runner, the new one. Oh, the twenty thirty eight. Yeah. yeah, that was that was phenomenal. Yeah, I, I that was really it. cool. Uh, oh yeah, I also watched the uh, Mission Impossible, the new one. Oh, that was really cool. I haven't seen that or <laughs> Eighth Grade, but both of those are on my list of movies to watch. Yeah, so I'll, I'll check those out soon. So, what makers do you watch or read on a regular basis? Ooh, well, I watch a lot on YouTube. Well. Okay, I'll just have to open my YouTube because there are so many. Uh, well, recently I enjoyed Michael Reeves a lot. I don't know. He's, I guess he is a maker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is one. Uh, but also, let's see. I'll just look at my subscriptions. I watch a lot of EV blog. I mean, he doesn't make a lot of stuff, but just, you know, watching him review other stuff is cool. I also like, I like to make stuff. Bob, you know, uh, he doesn't do anything that I do. He doesn't do any electronics. Well, not a lot, but I, I like, you know, woodworking and stuff like that as well. So that interests me as well. Uh, let's see. Colin first. He as well. I mean, he doesn't make electronics either, but I just, there's just something fascinating about, you know, what he does. Um, uh, wow. Simoniach. Oh, yeah. She makes pretty cool robots. <laughs> so, if we can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we can. I think we can classify it as that. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a really good list. Uh, I, I liked a lot of the names you threw out there. And one thing that was interesting is you mentioned the woodworking, because I, I think oftentimes people outside maker communities tend to look at maker things as just electronics or robotics. But things like uh, woodworking, metalworks, glass blowing, that definitely is in the maker community as yeah, well. Certainly. So what advice yeah. would you give to someone who was kind of just delving into the maker space? Uh, probably start simple. <laughs> Don't go into anything crazy. <laughs> start with blinking LED before you do anything you actually want to do. <laughs> I think that would be my first advice because it can be pretty discouraging when people get into uh, making and they just found, find out how difficult it is. So start simple. That's what I would say. That's, that's very sage wisdom right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think probably counter to what most makers, myself included, would initially try to do. <laughs> yeah. That's, I think everybody starts big and then... <laughs> and gets humble are there any kind of trends in maker spaces that really excite you mm, yeah i think uh, there is this trend of uh, a lot of these industrial machines getting cheaper and more affordable i think you know a couple of years ago cnc machines laser engravers were you know really expensive and now it's just getting cheaper and cheaper and you know, I've even seen, I don't remember what it was called, but it was this CNC, handheld CNC router that was kind of guiding you to, uh, I don't know if I can even explain that, but it was basically, it, you could use it as a CNC router by just moving it around and it was, it would just, just, you know, uh, for your movements. So we see a lot of these things, these industrial machines getting affordable. And I think that's one trend that's definitely exciting. Totally, especially as there's just more iteration with those industrial machines that uh, then older models will become more affordable. Yeah. So I think Even that's going to be... 3D printers, 3D printers are extremely expensive. I mean, cheap now and the prices are just going down. So I'm, you know, I might just buy CNC router or something like that because it's getting so cheap that I might as well. Yeah. When 3D printers first started hitting the market, they were just ridiculously expensive. And then recently I saw one on like Gearbest or something for like 100 or 80. 
Yeah. Uh, so I was like, that's pretty inexpensive. I could I could buy that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not worth the money, but... <laughs> no, because I'd use it like a once to make a Raspberry Pi case and then forget that I owned it or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or it would just be a really poor quality 3D printer. But... Yeah, well, with the Chinese, you don't know what you get. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's still exciting that they are so cheap. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, guys, that's all we have for me to make our episode one. Thanks for listening. You can follow us at Electromaker.io on Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook at Electromaker.io. You can follow Gyro at Gyro underscore YouTube on Twitter. And you can check out his phenomenal projects on YouTube at gyro one let us know what makers you'd like us to interview and what projects you're working on